want to preach on the subject out of Isaiah chapter number 40. There is nobody like our God. Isaiah chapter 40 is one of my favorite chapters in the Word of God. It's an encouragement in this evil, dark world that we live in. When you look around and you see all the evil that we live around, Isaiah chapter 40 has encouraging words for Christians living in a dark world. It tells us of how good our God really is. And I want to preach on the thought, there ain't nobody like our God. Number one, let's look at verse 4 of Isaiah chapter 40. The Bible says, Every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. The Bible says the valleys move up to our God's level. The Bible says the mountains and hills lower in His presence. The crooked become straight as He approaches. He smooths out all the rough places. The earth obeys His every command. When you look around, every living thing points straight in His direction. The trees stand straight up. The grass is pointed towards the heavens. Even man-made skyscrapers and buildings point straight towards our God. I was talking to an atheist one time, and I asked him to name me one thing that doesn't point toward heaven. After about five minutes, he finally came up with a lame answer. His answer was, moth that grows on the side of a building. I said, well, which way does the building go? He said, straight up. I said, so that moth is growing straight up towards the heavens on the side of that building. Our God is honorable in his creation. Verses 7 through 8, the Bible says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. People will come and go like the wind in your life, but God says he'll stand by you when nobody else will. Some of you today have had your parents forsake you because you've chose to follow Christ, but God wants to be your heavenly father. Some of you today, your parents have went on to be with the Lord, but God wants to be your heavenly father. Some of you have friends that have turned their back on you for one reason or another, but God wants to be your dearest friend. Some of you today have been hurt by church members. You have wounds that seem like they just won't go away, but God wants to patch up and heal those wounds. I can tell you, I can't tell you how many times my family, my friends, and even some church members have hurt me. Somehow they always fail because they're man and they can't help but to fall. But God will never fail you. He'll take those wounds of hurt and he'll patch them up and he'll fix things for you if you'll let him. He's honorable because his word will never fade. Even though everybody else around us fades away, God's word will never fade. Verses 13 through 14. The Bible says, Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? No one taught God anything that he doesn't already know. He knows the path that each and every one of us will take, and yet he still created us. He knows your deepest, darkest secret. He knows every vile thought that's ever crossed your mind. He knows every wicked thing that your eyes have seen. He knows every wicked thing that's ever come out of your mouth. And yet He loves you. Yet He still wants to be with you. Yet He still desires your praise. And yet He still came and died on an old rugged cross so that you could have salvation. What a thought. I'm so glad our God is honorable because He loves us, even knowing us. Even knowing what we are, knowing we deserve to burn in hell for the rest of eternity, He still chose to make a way out. We serve an honorable God. He's worthy of your praise and He's worthy of your honor. Not only that, but He's also, there's nobody like our God in the heavens He produced. Verse 12, the Bible says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in balance. When I think of heaven and God's creation, I think of the marvel of it. No one knows how many stars are in the sky. They continue to go on and on. The moon is 14.6 million square miles. The sun is 92,960,000 miles away from our planet Earth. 
There are eight different planets, all ranging from different sizes. That's how big our God is. And then I also think of heaven, our home. And when I think of heaven, I think of the majesty of it. John 14, 2 says there will be mansions in heaven. Revelation says there's going to be a crystal river in heaven. Hebrews eleven sixteen says God has prepared a city in heaven. Revelation 21, 18 says the walls in heaven will be made of jasper. Revelation 21, 21 says the streets will be made of pure gold. Yep. Just think about kicking up gold nuggets when we get to heaven. <laughs> While we're walking down the road. This whole world don't compare to anything God has for us. All of these things. And yet he's still managing everything. The sun hasn't fallen out of the sky. The moon hasn't stopped circling right. the earth. And the stars have never disappeared. Not a single one of them. But yet we're worried about our lives. And we're worried how everything is going to work out. God's got you. Quit worrying. Have faith in him. He said he'll take care of you. Not only those things, but there's nobody like our God and the help that he provides. I can't tell you how many times I've needed help and God has met the need. But I can tell you that every time I've needed him, he's met me right where I needed him. I didn't have to go to him. He came down to me. He put his love and arms around me and he met my every need. Verse 27. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from God? He said, Jacob, why are you whining? Why are you worried? Why are you stressed? And God's asking you today, why are you whining? Why are you worried? Why are you stressed? Verse 28, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He said, I'm not going to faint. He said, he's not weary. Sometimes we can't understand the ways of God. Sometimes there's no answer. We need to just quit looking for a way out of our situation and start waiting on God. And that word waiting doesn't mean to sit there and twiddle your thumbs on a church pew until the Lord comes back or until he fixes the problem. That word waiting has the idea of serving, has the idea of serving the Lord. So how do you not get weary in this old wicked world? Soul winners, keep soul winning. Sunday school teachers, you just keep teaching Sunday school. Preachers, keep preaching the gospel. Keep telling everybody Jesus loves them. That he's the only way to heaven. Singers, keep singing. Church cleaners, keep cleaning. Givers, keep giving. Don't quit. He's got you. He's going to take care of you. That's the only way you won't get weary is to continue. Just keep doing exactly what you're doing. Once you realize that serving him is all he wants to you, everything else will fall in its rightful place anyway. Verse 29, the Bible says, He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. He will give us power to get through it. He knows you're tired. He knows you're without strength. But he's trying to give you strength. He wants you to keep waiting on him and keep serving him. Not only those things, but there's nobody like our God in the hope that he promises. Verse 30, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall man up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He's promised if you're serving him, if you're waiting on him in that sense of serving him, he's promised he'll give you strength and weakness. He's promised he'll give you light and darkness. He's promised he'd give you encouragement when you're discouraged. He's promised he'd give you comfort when you're lonely. He's promised he'd give you food when you're hungry. He'd give you water when you're thirsty. He'll give you love when you're hated. And he'll give you a word from heaven when you need it so just keep waiting on the lord keep serving him and he'll keep taking care of you Amen.